Okay, uh, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo Tal. I'm a PhD student uh, in the Museum of Zoology in Senckenberg, Dresden, in Germany. Hello, and Naomi. the work I'm going to present to you right now is a collaborative um, work. I have to share it first. Let's see. I'm hearing someone else. Oh, no. Okay, oh, so this is a collaborative work. Christian, your work. mic is on. Yes. I can't look out of this. <laughs> So I have to first make okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. this is a, a collaborative work uh, with Professor Mario Vargas Ramirez from the National University of Colombia and of course my advisor, Professor Uwe Fritz. And it's called Phylogeography of Two Widely Distributed Mud Turtles uh, Show Contrasting Genetic Structure Pattern and Challenges Current Taxonomy. So the family Kinosternidae uh, lies within Cryptodira, that are these uh, turtles that can hide their neck uh, inside their shell. Uh, it includes 23 species in three genera, and they are distributed uh, from the United States to Argentina. They are called uh, mud turtles. They have aquatic habitats. They can live in rivers, in ponds, and lakes, but they are surprisingly not that good swimmers. They mainly walk in the bottom of the of these water bodies. They are omnivorous. They are not that big turtles. They are kind of small, about 20 centimeters of caparas. And so the genus Kinosternum is the most special genus, not only within the Kinosternum family, but among all the turtle genus, genera. It, it has almost the same distribution as the family, like from the United States to Argentina. Um, so there are two recent uh, phylogenetic uh, works uh, that have worked with genetic data. One is from Iverson in 2013, and the other one is, is from Sphinx in 2014. They, they are really close in time. So the Iverson work only used mitochondrial plus nuclear data, and the Sphinx work uh, only used nuclear data. So they were really different in what they obtained. Like the first work uh, of Iverson find that Kinosternum was not monophyletic, so he split it in two clades, in two genera. This here, Cryptocalis and Kinosternum, because this other genus from the family that is called Sternoterus uh, was found inside all the Kinosternum uh, species. But uh, opposite to that, uh, Spinks found that Kinosternum was a uh, monophyletic and Sternoterus was uh, like a, the sister genus. So he proposed that the Kinosternum should should state as a, as a genus without splitting. <clears throat> and they suggested that this, uh, this position of Sternoterus may have been due to past introgression. So most of the species in Kinosternum uh, have relatively small uh, distribution, as you can see here. But contrary uh, as what could be expected uh, with species with small range at among turtles, they are not that threatened. They have only one species uh, that is not is threatened, that is this one here. But the other one, the others have like a really good condition. And contrary to these other uh, species with small ranges, we have two species that are the ones uh, we are going to talk about today that have wide distribution. One, the first is Kinosternum locostomum that is distributed uh, from Mexico to Peru and has two currently uh, accepted subspecies. Uh, the red one is Kinosternum leucostomum, leucostomum and the other one is Kinosternum leucostomum postinguinal, the one that enters in uh, to South America. The other species is Kinosternum scorpioides that has almost the same distribution, but expands uh, southwards in the Cisandian region. The Cisandian region is this region uh, 
at, in the south of the Andes, that include the Amazonia, the Mata Atlantica, and all this, all this um, ecosystem. And it's also in one island here in the Caribbean that is called San Andres. Uh, it includes currently, ah, uh, there is a mistake. There are three currently accepted uh, subspecies Scorpioides uh, in red, Albogulare in purple, and Cruentatum in yellow. And there is an, an additional species that sometimes have been called as subspecies uh, and some other times as full species. Currently, it's accepted as a full species that is Chinosterna baxillare. So the previous work that I already talked to you about um, have found a Chinosternum scorpioides as polyphyletic, as you can see here, and Chinosternum leucostomum monophyletic just in the Spinks work that included more than one specimen to be able to say that it's monophyletic or not. So our question was that given these widely co-distributed co species and one of them, Chinosternum scorpioides, found previously found as non-monophyletic, our question were, is there a shared diversification history in this species? And is there like a cryptic diversity in Chinosternum leucostum and Chinosternum scorpioides? So to answer uh, these questions, uh, we, sec we generated data for 30 specimens of Chinosternum leucostum and 76 specimens uh, of Chinosternum scorpioides for most of their range as you can see here. In red, uh, Chinosternum leucostomum, and in blue, Chinosternum uh, scorpioides. We, we, we sequenced three mitochondrial fragments and seven nuclear ones. And we analyzed it with two algorithms with maximum likelihood implemented in IQ3 and Bayesian analysis implemented in this. And as a species, uh, Proxy, we use a uncorrelated, uncorrected p distances of the cytochrome B gene. So, and we analyze it separately, our mitochondrial data and our nuclear data. So, our results uh, found that uh, the mitochondrial tree had higher support than the nuclear tree at a uh, for some reason, we don't know. Probably there, there was a really low variation uh, in the genes. Uh, the nuclear markers didn't have that much variation, and, and therefore we, we didn't have reached like highly supported clades. So, kinosternum was supported mainly monophyletic in the in the nuclear tree, but not that much in the in the mitochondrial tree. Chinosternum leucostomum was found uh, forming a highly monophyletic clade, and all of the samples uh, of Chinosternum leucostomum were found also uh, forming a, a, a monophyletic clade that you can see here in red. And our results like found the same things that found spinks in their nu uh, only nuclear data and Iverson in the mitochondrial nuclear data. Here only in, in the only mitochondrial tree, we found like the other genus also was found within uh, within Chinosterum, Cernoterus, and the nuclear data was sister to Chinosterum. So we have to do some additional analysis, but this, this is, as they said before, it's probably due to introgression. So for Chinosterum, uh, uh, Leucostomum, we found no apparent uh, phylogenetic structure. As you can see here, the clades are not, uh, not deep enough. Uh, no, there are no high support for, for, for structural clades. So it seems that Kinosternum leucostomum is a continuous lineage through all Central America and Northern South America. So what about the subspecies? So our data don't support the subspecies, and we suggest they should be synonymized. So it is just one taxa, and there are no, no, 
no enough information to say that there are subspecies or additional species. And probably that could be seen in the future when more sampling is included, mainly from these regions that we didn't have much information, for example, in southern Mexico and in the Pacific region of North and South America. Uh, on the other hand, for Kinosteron scorpiotes, we found a, a highly structured uh, tree. So we found around eight clades. There are two main clades, one South American and one Central American, which suggests that there was a single invasion to South America from Central America in this group. So looking closely, to the Central American uh, radiation, there are no like good structure uh, among these clades. As you can see, there is no deep uh, structure and there is no good support. Supports are considered good here, uh, above 95% of support, but the, the main clades are kind of well supported. So, we can say that there is some south to north uh, segregation in the clades and there are some geographic accidents that might be associated with the with the diversification of these clades one is the Tehuantepec isthmus in mexico the other one is sierra madre del sur sierra madre de chiapas but we can we can say uh, with the current data, we can say which one has worked for which clade. So we need some more analysis that we, we will probably do afterwards. And surprisingly, the Iceland population were found within the continental, uh, within the continental population. Some, some authors in the past have said that this could be a new species, a different species being an Iceland. Uh, uh, been in an island, but we found that there, there is no, it's, no, it's unjustified. So going to the South American clade, we can see that there was at least one in to the uh, Cisantian region here. As you can see here in red, Cisantian region is the, is the region north uh, of the Andes. And there is a mainly, a, excuse me, Cisandian region is the region south of the Andes. So there was just one invasion to the Transandian region, the one north of the Andes. But there's a still a lot of sampling to do for this region. As you can see, it's a really big region. So we still have like a very few samples mainly for this Cisandian region here. We have just one sample from this region, some four samples for this region, so it would be nice to increase this sampling to see what happens. So what happens with the taxonomy? So we use uh, genetics uh, distances, as I told you, we use a uh, 3% as a cutting line to define whether they should be called or not. Uh, as different species, this is a no just a number, but it has been used, it has been useful in previous work. So we found five species within Kinosternum scorpioides. Kinosternum scorpioides for the uh, South American clade. As you can see, the differences with these three clade, the green, the pink, and the red one, are below uh, 3%. Then we have Kinosternum Oaxaca for this other Central American pink clade and the yellow clade that have this. Uh, Northern Central American distribution. We have Kinosternum integrum that is distributed in Northern South America. Kinosternum populare for the for most uh, of Central America that has a wide distribution. I would think Kinosternum populare is a former subspecies that, that is called Crentatum, so we suggest it should be synonymized with Albopulari and Albopulare should go up to, to species rank. And finally, Kinosternon uh, abaxillare. So 
what are the future directions for, for our work? Uh, explore. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Juan Pablo. Uh, you have okay. one minute left of your presentation time. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, the future direction is to evaluate non dichotomous uh, relationships like haplotypes, networks, uh, PCAs. Uh, also, it would be really interesting to date our tree uh, because uh, that way we could associate uh, geographic accidents or, or, or climate changes uh, uh, to the diversification processes to study the to study deeply the morphology of this group because the morphological differentiation is really difficult. Uh, a lot of, not that many works have, have tried to do it and the ones that have tried uh, weren't that successful. And also to use um, distribution models to, to associate uh, climate to, to, to this lineage. So that, that was it. I want to thank all the people in the molecular lab here in St. Kemper's Dresden to the DAD that gave the grant for my PhD. And thank you for listening.